the grand finale of uh, the opinion by the master, Dr. David Adams, and thanks all of you uh, to uh, be part of this uh, exciting afternoon. And now we actually have, we can go to a, a cat lab, good. Okay, uh, so the, we have two case presentations, so uh, who are, all need to come here. Uh, I think everybody, uh, uh, Gagan Singh, and come. Um, Sunny, Goel Sunny arrived? No? Okay. Neil is here. Great. Uh, Han, Ed Edwin Ho, everyone. Yeah. Okay. So there are two uh, little uh, you know, cases which were a little dera derailed that one patient did have some vascular complication after our, uh, the tower, but they fixed it. So that's why a little delay in it. And uh, now we have two cases. One is the septal ablation. I think they want to do septal ablation first uh, and uh, then go to the CAP and TMVR. Uh, so Anu, are you ready? They told me that you are ready there. And they can present the slide number seven. So we seven is first and then six later. Ah, we don't have a slide? Uh, uh, there's SS, they're saying uh, you don't have slides? Slide seven is there. Kick, kick, slide number seven, that's on the key, they have it. Otherwise, on the, there is on the desktop. But uh, we start, uh, anyway, the patient. Okay. Yeah. Huh? Yeah, yeah, I, so I mean, I can give number, the history. I can give the history while they are finding six, the slide. Actually. Yeah. Okay, so this is a. Uh, Case FA is a 40-year-old male who actually was referred to us for management of, uh, you know, hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, diagnosed by one of our local cardiologists. He had placed him on medication, but he continues to have uh, exertional dyspnea, dizziness, fatigue, and was getting worse over the last year or so. Uh, we actually saw him in the office almost uh, four or five months ago then changes medication, recommended uh, some newer therapy, uh, then was lost for follow-up. Again presented in the last uh, uh, couple of weeks ago, continued symptoms. Um, so before we go to show his, uh, I think we can show his uh, uh, echocardiogram first and then we will show his uh, angiogram. Yeah. Um, so, we so have let Lone me just, Croft, uh, if I can, uh, yeah, doing I can. Echocardiogram. Okay. So myself wow. and I have Amit Huda, who is our uh, um, other attending, who does uh, structural procedures with us. Then I have uh, David Powers, who is our uh, uh, interventional fellow, and Rajiv, who is our structural fellow. And of course, this is room two, our usual coronary room, uh, that we are doing a structural procedure. We have uh, Asif Tech and uh, Will as the nurse. Rob is also there, yes. So let me just add so on to- So you can see the echo. No, but just one second, before you go to the echo, because this is very important. So audience, they need to know why this case is being done. 40 year old, symptomatic, very high gradient, more than 100, about going to various doctors here in New York City, uh, and suggested my myotomy, myomectomy uh, appropriately, but he did not want to go at present because he is in process of getting married. So he said, if can somebody give me five years, I can have a myectomy after five years. So we have been seeing him, so try to give all the medications. Uh, only two things he could tolerate, the verapamil and uh, metaprolol. Uh, the both diisopyramide could not, and mevacamptum, which I know those who have used it, dramatic effect. But most of the insurance companies do not approve. And you know the out-of-pocket per month expense of the mevacamptum at present is $9,600 per month. So that he could not afford. So he lost. He thought we thought that uh, he probably had a surgery. He showed up again a few weeks ago and writes for our symposium. He said, "You know, please, if you can just give me four or five years, uh, and I said we can do. We definitely would not do the harm, except there is a chance for permanent pacemaker." But he understood that point. So with that note, uh, patient is being done just for kind of a, I don't I would not say the palliative, but palliative from symptoms point of view with a definite treatment uh, for him will be the myectomy because of the young age. And he has other tests done. He has a, a MRI, we can go to the next slide. You can show the uh, patient has been worked up outside uh, at the institution by all the testings with the MRI consultation and so on and so forth. Okay, so this is a 
the echo you had, which we'll show later. Let us uh, try to show the MRI. Go for the next. Yes. So. Definitely thick septum. You can see that concentric uh, LVH, and you can see the uh, systolic anterior motion of the mitral. I think we will appreciate more on the echo. Okay, next. And next. Yeah, yeah they also so said that. It actually looks okay. Yeah, and the fibrosis was between 8 to 10 percent myocardial fibrosis. So there was a question whether this young age with such a high gradient should get the ICD also, but uh, the expert said no. So I don't know, maybe ex those who can give comment on it, uh, that would, uh, should he get uh, ICD fibrosis is less than 10 percent on the MRI? Usually the risk goes up around 15 to 20. Yeah. And so uh, I think with just that alone, I would say no. Um, but compounding this is that certainly he's going to get some fibrosis with the ablation. And so those are the considerations. And, and if he were to need a pacemaker after the ablation, we would probably recommend a defibrillator. OK. Yeah. OK. Yeah. OK. Yeah. Let's go to the echo, live echo now. Then we go to the invasive. Okay, Lori, what do you see? Okay, so here's the parasternal long axis. You can see the very sick basal septum. It measures about uh, 20 millimeters, two centimeters. Um, you can see, you appreciate some SAM here. The high turbulent flow through the LVOT as well as MR from the SAM. Beautiful M mode showing the SAM. Once again, this is an apical four chamber. You can see the eccentric MR that's created from the uh, systolic motion of the anterior leaflet. This is the MR. We did this to make sure that we're, we're uh, uh, CWing the right gradient and not doing the LVOT, but this is MR, which you can see is higher. There's just a nice demonstration in almost a five chamber showing the six, six septum. It's three chamber showing the uh, SAM of the anterior, uh, anterior leaflet. And here we're getting an LVO2 gradient of about 92 without provocation. Now, is there, there was also mention about the caudal SAM, and some consultant said that septal ablation will not work. So I, maybe experts can tell about, and uh, Laurie yourself, uh, they say that, yes, so some... I'm seeing more, this is more um, leaflet SAM, but caudal SAM, right, that we don't really see a, a much improvement with caudal SAM, and it usually doesn't cause that much of a gradient. This, he has actually true uh, anterior leaflet motion. And there's a clear contact lesion there, too. And so you know that there must be leaflet SAM at some point, because uh, you can see that in the LVOT view. Maybe I should just ask Paul, you published on using edge-to-edge uh, -edge to fix both problems. What do you think about that in this case? Yeah. So th this could work. Uh, you could consider MitraClip. You know, it has obvious advantages of not having uh, the scar, the pacer risk, and other what have you. Uh, the only challenge in this case is that we, we would need to know the valve area because these patients with this dynamic MR, they tend not to have dilated annuli, so you don't have as much to work with. But in a patient with a high gradient, severe MR, long anterior leaflet that's clippable, uh, we would consider it if the other options are less attractive. Okay. All right, Anno, you go. Okay, so let's go for the angiogram here. Not yet. We did. Uh, we don't need LV gram here. So right coronary artery is normal, clean. So if you think uh, we have to do septal ablation, I think a very important, which is the right septum. So can you show the hemodynamics also? So usually you need uh, two catheters. Now we say the risk for pacemaker could be anywhere between 10 to 15 percent. So we do put a neck pacer. Uh, in the patient, we are showing the hemodynamics. So we have a multipurpose in the mid cavity, and then um, the other one, aortic pressure, is usually from the guide. So you do see that there's a baseline gradient almost about 20. So post PVC, let me give you a post PVC. One. Oof, wow. I mean, they got your uh, echo got 90. I mean, these are multiple, but I think if you take one, we probably can say up to 100. Yeah, the outside also one time echo resting was 90 and post PVC was 280 on echo mm -hmm. outside. So definitely typical you see uh, the pulse pressure dropping after uh, the PVC. S 
So going back to who are the cases that uh, uh, could get this procedure, like we mentioned here, ideally at this age, uh, best thing would be that the uh, surgery, so they can take care of everything, myectomy as well as uh, uh, repair the mitral valve. But for obvious reason, in this uh, young guy, we are doing the septal ablation. So we got to know the septal, I mean, which septal uh, is the right septal. So we can, the, there's a first septal uh, that's branching. Uh, you can see a branch that's going to the base and uh, lower it thinks the majority of the gradient is mid to the apex. Uh, so we have decided even we will go to the first septal. So there's a small one which is not even re reaching the septum. The first septal is uh, branching, so one that's going to the base, the one that is going to the mid to the apex, and that's what we are going to aim. And of course, you see a second septal, which is also branching and a lot of squeezing. And I don't think we need to go all the way there. Uh, essentially, most of the time, it's the first septal. So majority of the time, it's from the LAD. We may see sometimes septal can come from the ramus, sometimes left main. Um, even OMs, and very rarely we have aberrant septal that's coming from the RCA. Uh, we even have a case report of that case where we have done septal ablation, aberrant uh, uh, origin coming from the RCA, we had to do ablation of that. So many times we have to go to multiple septal. Once we go there, we inject a little bit of uh, the echo contrast and Lori is going to tell us, is it the right spot for us to uh, inject the alcohol. So if everything is okay, we have a guide ready, anticoagulation has been given, uh, patient has been warned, he can get some chest pain, pacemaker through the neck, and we will use our regular fielder wire. So the size of the septum is about 1.5. Uh, the proximal part of the septum is about 2. So we have a 1.5 over the wire balloon. So we'll be using that. And with the fielder wire, Try to go. Good, right? So, any other questions regarding procedure? Yes, Harvey. We can't hear the. Yeah, question. no, no. Basically, is that can you express, you know, show? Uh, very good hemodynamic tracings at rest uh, with the bifid LV pressure and the, the you know, uh, early upstroke and so uh, in the aortic pressure and post PVC, you did show the decrease in pulse pressure. But in the, because. Now uh, you can see that I think our catheter uh, is mid to apex. You see that this is the base, baseline we are seeing. Hmm. Can you go to 300 scale, both pressures? Yeah. I don't even have to give uh, post PVC. You can see a nice uh, PVC here, single. 90 to 300, almost like a 190, right? So Ed mentioned that it's a spike and dome pattern in your uh, LV yes. tracing. Um, and. Um, and basically the gradient of post-PVC right, increase and uh, pulse pressure decreases in the beat post-PVC. Once you have too many PVC, it's very tough to uh, show. But this is a, I mean, even severe aortic stenosis, uh, nobody will survive with this one uh, if there is a baseline of 200 okay, plus. So it's all subaortic. There, there probably also is, is multiple sources for the gradient when the catheter was just in the LVOT. Yeah. There was no resting gradient. Now that the catheter has been advanced into the mid cavity, there is a resting gradient now. So, yeah. so I think setting the expectations with the patient that you know you'll probably be able to obliterate the LVOT gradient, which is probably going to cause the greatest amount of relief. But there might be a residual mid cavity gradient because you're starting to see right. some evidence of that here. Okay. Okay. So if you see here, we are inflated the one o balloon in that uh, first sept branch of the first septal. So we leave it there, and then we'll take out the wire, do it under the water. Can you show what we are doing with our hands? So no air trapped into the catheter? Yes. Show the ceiling camera. So use the hand. OK, we can go back to echo.
So I'm going to inject definity, slow. So I'm not seeing it at all in that septum. Uh, it's on to the, the right RV, part of the, the septum, side. you think you have to go to the other there, bearer, right? there, yeah. yeah. It's, it, it's on the RV side near the moderator yes. band. Yeah. yeah. Pull back, huh? Yeah. Balloon so is too we, distant. And how we just too mentioned, how we yes, just mentioned for the distant. audience, and that's what we would do as well. We would actually try to put the balloon just inside the septum, and mm -hmm. we would just take all the branches. We would we would not do the sub branch, um, okay? Because it's it's a pretty thick septum, and I think. Um, we you try the other branch. Yeah. But your one-o balloon, if you range. bring proximal, is too one. small. No, the question is, uh, do we go to the first branch? Initially, we thought we don't want to go that side. Maybe we go there. Okay. Or but this is more RV-sided. Yeah, the other one. Yeah, the other one. Let yeah. me go back and try this one. Go up again with the balloon. Good. So as you know, the plan here okay. is that uh, echo contrast concentrate on that bulge septum. Uh, that's basically the septal which is supplying. And that's what you have to kind of uh, look into various septums by giving... Okay. okay, I'm injecting again. Okay. I don't think we're still uh, showing still the system right? It's up and down. Yeah, right. Still on the RV side. Still on the RV side? Yeah. Maybe we go to that branch, the first branch we always wanted to. I wonder if like a parasternal oh. long axis uh, might show it for you or um, a parasternal yeah, short axis. Long. Give, it, a, give yeah. it in this one. I think what, a long axis or short axis might give you the base or the uh, area a little bit more. Yeah, it looks like no contrast has gone into that bulge. Right. Mm -hmm. Huh? What do you think, Lori? I think you should try a different septal because we're not seeing it where I want to see it. No? No, say that. You don't see anything there? No. Okay, let us go to that first branch then. Hold on, I'm trying. Also, this is some kind of a new balloon we have now. What is this balloon we have? A mini trick. Maverick balloons are gone. They don't make it anymore. It's very hard to inject through this balloon. You don't see anything, right? No. Okay, let me go to another branch. I look into this branch of the first one, but what about the second, the real septal, uh, second septal, which is getting a tremendous squeeze? So Before that, I come yeah. out of this, let me go to that uh, first branch. If not, we go to the second one, second and, septal. And while we are working on it with a time issue, our Gilbert and the team, they are working on the other case for the TMVR, right? Getting ready there? Patient is in the room now. Yes, okay. yes, patient Perfect. is in the room. Okay, give me the builder wire. Maybe uh, someone can uh, 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 enlighten us uh, about the newer drugs besides mevacamptum, other being tried at present. And of course, uh, my personal experience has been great in terms of the response to the drug, except that it's uh, very tough to get to the patient. Uh, maybe there's some newer medicines will come, uh, drugs will be competition, uh, will drive the cost down and uh, will be a little easier available. You think? Right now, it's, that's a big issue. Um Going on slow roads. Give me some guy. I don't know a lot of the newer medic, the anything beyond Mavicampton, but the problem also is not just cost, but the ongoing follow-up. Yeah, there every month. Serial echoes, EKGs, and then you need to get an ongoing authorization for them. Sometimes you'll get it for a few months, and then they then they fall into the donut hole, and and then they have to pay several thousand dollars out of pocket. So it's it's just has not been uh, has been difficult to maintain. <laughs> 
<laughs> I, I like that balloon position a little bit more. I think that's nice. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Right, right there. Yeah. Yes. Okay. We'll step that. Okay. Come. A little, that's a little. Oh. Yeah. I, I, okay. Go. But we should be sub selective or could go a little more proximal. But then you have bigger balloon, oh. you need a bigger balloon then. You have one, we will be too small. We, we, yeah, we will go more proximal. Okay, proximal let's try here. Do an angiogram to confirm that there's no extravasation. Okay. If there's no extravasation, then we, we'd be okay with injecting to it. So, Whoa. Yeah. Even there's not a full seal. It, it, Even if there is not a full uh, seal of the septal. Oh, no, we, we would want to see a full seal. That's okay. Yeah, yeah. okay. Yeah. So. <clears throat> And it's important to oversize mm -hmm. the balloons when we do yeah, these. Exactly. Because still otherwise, going to the it's very hard to inject through them. Yeah. 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 Right, Lo. So, can we? I don't see the it. So let's go to the. Go, I don't see it in the apical, in the parasternal. So look, we're looking for it. Yeah, that looks much better. Yeah. I know it's more. Oh, yes. we see a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's there it. it is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good. Just for the audience it's good that. Enough? Yep. But it's still in through, so be careful with we'll it. We'll go how much? One or two? One cc. Right there. Lodi Croft tells me one cc, we go one cc. Because okay. he's going to go into heart block. Do a sniff test, make sure there is alcohol. She loves to play with the button. <laughs> okay, give some morphine and warn the patient. He'll be having chest pain, so we are uh, tequila. <laughs> Will Tan is saying it's tequila going in now. Okay. But this is 95%, right? Absolute. Okay, we're injecting. Start the timer. Go slow. Can we see the EKGs? Yeah, that's yes. the... Yes. Uh, uh, let's go. You don't need to show the... Echo yet. We need a hemodynamic. Floro. We don't need a fluoro. Okay. What you can do is uh, show a little uh, hemo. They can still put the hemo on the right, on the right side uh, below. And the questions from the audience, please keep sending. Uh, the last one was RV dysfunction in the tricuspid valve. <laughs> Can we show the timer also? We are now 41 seconds, 45 seconds. Lead one has some ST depression or that's the way it was? No, but we are not seeing the hemodynamics uh, and ECG those. Can we put the hemodynamics? Uh, good. So that's the post PVC now. Go to 200 again. It's looking better. Yeah. It's much better, yeah. Let me do a post PVC, just touch it a little bit. Good. Okay. Baseline has gone down. What should be our parameter uh, in these cases? Uh, that what we should be achieving from the resting reduction gradient? By 50, I mean, the reduction by 50%. <laughs> so. Yeah, I mean, I think your initial target is at least 50%, but, you know, as, as much as the patient can tolerate is, is better. I mean, this is a 40, 50 year old, pretty functional patient. I mean, I would argue that with a really good no? septal ablation, you can avoid amyectomy altogether. Um, and it can be durable. You gotta deal with fibrosis and if there is conduction abnormality. Okay, uh, post PVC definitely has gone down now. You see that? Yes. Almost only 50. We were uh, over. Uh, Give uh, only one cc that? only? One cc of alcohol? So completed one cc. Yeah, one cc. Uh, Lori, no more? Do you want me to give one more? No, we don't see. Our gradient definitely has gone down. It's now. Uh, how much are you getting? You got 90, right? Look at our post PVC. It's almost. It's only sixty now. 
I wanted to talk to you. So you also went down to half. Yeah. Well, definitely very he dramatic any... response. Very dramatic response for one cc of alcohol. And we actually have learned that over the years, there is not the quantity, so it's exactly correctly placed uh, alcohol, that is what uh, really uh, translates into the improvement and not even the, the cause less CK release and of course uh, uh, less chance of complete heart block and so. Oh, oh. Hmm. What's happening is I think we stop here. It's just uh, I had a bad coughing bot. But more important, I think post PVC gradient. I know pre is now down to about uh, 20. Even post PVC is down to about 60. I gave one and a half so far. I was going to finish and give two. It's coughing too much. And anyone, uh, please to complete. Uh, send us questions as with the uh, QR code. Uh, if uh, about the case and of course, any comments from our uh, panel panelists here. In 25 now. Yeah. I think if everybody is okay, we can uh, we can call this as successful and completion of the procedure. You give some morphine, settling down. Okay. All right. I think uh, shown a great demonstration. In a little atypical, unusual case, uh, I think this probably will be the youngest person we have done the septal ablation. Mostly they are in 70s, 80s, and 90s, uh, but uh, needed and uh, very great, very good hemodynamic results. Fantastic. Thank you. One, one other thing is that we just have to make sure before I come out that uh, LED flow is good. So we're just going to show that. Hasif, I want to go on cine. You happy, uh, Lori? Yeah, we're getting like 35, and I think it, I think I yeah. think given that his young age, you don't want to put him into heart block. Okay. Okay. I, I know we talked about defibrillator; it'd be something different. But for now, I think this is enough. We can always come back. And she says that echocardiography was no. That area of the septum is uh, akinetic, right? On the well, echo scan. Yes. Yeah. Yes. We just got the base, exactly what we wanted. What is uh, what is your uh, SAM and everything else is the same? So it went up. So it has it. gone down a little bit. Okay. Uh, hold on. Minuscule change. Okay. All right. Show the show the picture and then we go to a lecture yes. while you are getting ready for uh, okay. other case. No problem. We are going to deflate the balloon. Okay, we are good. We are going to go Sine, okay? Yep. Yes. Actually, if you yes. see that the branch of the septal, it's gone. the tip, you do, yeah, is gone. People can appreciate that. Yes, very clear. All right, fantastic, great job.